I do notice you got pictures on the wall there. And we are live and we are back with the Neurotic Podcast. My name is Gary Beekler. I am in San Francisco, California. I come to you from neurotic.com and I am with my co host and co neurotic.com person, comrade, not, not <laughs> dot comrade, Dennis Bethalkis. What's up, man? Hey, nothing much. How about you? Uh, not much. Crazy day. Getting ready for con. Is that uh, this week? But yeah, I think it's this week. I actually around what looks pristine uh, right now is shit to be packed and ready to go. And we will be live all four days and a couple nights before and the night after. So watch our YouTube channel and our Facebook. Uh, but tonight we are talking about Preacher season two, episode five, Dallas. And uh, dude, um, like we were just talking about in our pre-production meeting there, Dennis, this is an episode where it could be construed as filler, but it was actually really necessary. We needed this background. And instead of doing what other shows are doing, which we won't name with, uh, with the deuce ex, am I saying it right? A deuce ex, is it? Machina. Deuce ex, deuce ex machina. It's, um, uh, yeah. You know, uh, they, they, they actually, you know, gave, Tulip and Jesse, some pretty deep layers. Um, going further than the comic even did a little bit. Uh, kind of humanizing this kind of gonzo show. And, uh, you know, bring uh, th this was mainly a Tulip episode. I know it looked like a Jesse yeah. episode, but it was this was big time a Tulip episode. And uh, I, I, I liked it. I actually liked it a lot. In the middle, I was kind of like, where is this going? But um, the way it ended, uh, I really thought it was a good episode. What'd you think, man? Um, it was a bit slow for considering that the first three episodes were just so gangbusters. You know, everything was just, you know, all three, the first three episodes all started off big, you know, explosions, gunshots, all this kind of stuff. And kind of carried that through the episodes. And then last week was a little slower with Victor. And then this one picked up a little bit, well, a little bit more, but not much more. And I think what they're doing is they're just kind of they downshifted in you know for episode four. Now they're upshifting again for episode five, six, you know, going back up again. Yeah, I think it's it's gonna go balls out. And it was a little jarring, it not a little, it's a lot jarring how much they slowed this down. Uh, yeah. the, the last two episodes, and I was worried about this in episode what three that, that this Victor stuff wasn't, you know, especially not bearing the lead. He just ended up dead. You know, he would have been a good bad guy to leave around, um, especially when you're setting it up, setting it up the way they did. Um, you know, to Jesse and Tulip had the the miscarriage, which we we've seen that flashback like four times now, four or five times. Um, I don't know how necessary that was. I think we kind of figured out what was going on, but um, it was good to see like, you know, D Jesse's destruction and just like the loss of his soul and, uh, um, you know, having, having actually gone through this with, with my wife, we, we thought we lost Logan. Actually, they told us she miscarried and then later on he ended up being there, which was rad. Uh, but that month, was like hell i was hell so like that was i maybe that's why it, it kind of touched me a little bit as like i felt like what they felt like it's just you feel dead inside um but you don't you you know you you tell yourself oh it's all right it was just an egg and da 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 but it's not okay it's not you you feel like you, you lost a family member um so that that can it's disastrous to a relationship and they tried, uh, but then, you know, Jesse finds out that uh, Tulip has been, you know, they're trying to have this baby, um, but, he, you know, he's smoking a bunch of weed. He's with his friend Reggie, and they're hanging out in, uh, in, in the living room, and God, I've had those days smoking pot with, a, you know, your loser friend, or maybe I was the loser friend, like all day watching shit TV and rolling joints out of the Bible, which I have done. Uh, um, and not hurting the comic book, by the way. <laughs> um you know, and then, you know, and the, and the wife or the girlfriend working and coming home going loser, you know? Uh, yeah, I've, been, I've totally been through that. Um, and, and, and watching this, you're like, even though Tulip was not being honest, she wasn't, well, she was going to a job though, and she was still working and she was still getting money. It, it's hard for Jesse to judge her, isn't it? I mean, like, 
he was sitting on his ass, smoking pot all fucking day. And yeah, she was lying. She was taking the pill. She, Turns out she was taking the pill and, and worked being a criminal again. But she was still still being industrious. Yeah, that's because he had re- uh, resigned to living a norm, quote unquote normal life, and she didn't want that. No. And as she says, she can't she can't hack that pretty much. And uh, neither can he, really. And no. So that's why they, they kind of went their separate. We saw them. That's where they, they went their separate yeah. ways. And she, she clearly tried harder than he did. Clearly. Uh, I don't oh, know about dude, that. Dude, she went to work for three weeks. He sat on his ass on the couch and smoked some pot. Uh, you know, that's not trying. Uh, what he was are you a bartender. Oh, that's what... They, was, you know what? That's right. They did. And, and he was always working a couple nights a week. Well, you know, that was more than, I guess that's equal to her three weeks uh, at the real estate place, just taking in for sale signs. Um, and uh, the peanut butter pot roast. Have you ever heard of peanut butter pot roast before? I have not heard of peanut butter pot roast, but I have done a uh, bastardized uh, like Thai peanut butter chicken. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's the um, but I've never heard of peanut butter pot roast. I'm curious. Commenters, drop if you've ever done that before. Is it something I should try? I've got a, a son who's a bit of a chef, so I'm gonna throw that on him after this episode. Actually, well, not tonight. Had two jars of peanut butter too. That was yeah, uh, that yeah, that was a lot of peanut butter. That was a lot of peanut butter. Um, you could never it have was, peanut butter. Uh, obviously that thing was like a brick because you know it uh, was. Oh, what's her name? Danny was not having it. As she was trying to cut into it. No, no, Dan, Danny uh, is a crabby. Uh, uh, what, what is her job? Uh, um, she was the one that facilitated their job. She was, she, she found she's all a the crime job. facilitator. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, and crabby, very crabby person. But well, her dog Jew, died. Her dog died in that Jew bastard. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> We're not going to kill your husband. That was her husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um, still, what I'm missing, uh, Dennis, is uh, Cassidy. Not enough Cassidy in this episode. He, it did rally at the end, and we did get a major Cassidy moment. Let's talk about it right now. So, so basically, the first part of the episode was kind of boring. Okay, it was, and it was just Jesse. Mo- I even I'll even tell you my notes. Uh, it was Jesse mad, Dallas bad, no baby, peanut butter pot roast. Um, and that was pretty much it. And Danny comes over, doesn't like it. So, and what we're doing is we're flashing back, flashing forward to to the Dallas days. And Jesse's just basically moping around and his soul is dead and we get it. Um, and then we flash forward. The episode starts out really cool with uh, the continuation from last week. And he's got Victor in the headlock. And then there was a great camera scene where, you know, it's just tracking him. And he's got him by the neck. And that's just that was really cool cinematography there, or TV photography or whatever. And, um, you know, Jesse looked badass. Now, question: Is that badass, crazy Jesse, or is that a little bit of uh, Genesis in him, kind of sparking? I kind of took it as Genesis because you saw the he was unfocused, and then he focused in on Tulip. It just felt like that—that that was a bit of the power coming through. What do you think on that one? Uh, I think it's—I think it's Jesse. It's his uncontrollable side. Uh, the side that he doesn't like accessing. Um, and it was the reason for him. It was also the reason for him giving up the life of crime that they were leading. Too. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's the, the good and bad conflict in Jesse. He was raised yeah. by a preacher, but he's been kind of a shit all his life. And, uh, you know, all of us can identify with that a little bit. Right. Uh, as, I, as I think Danny, it was his power. I think his power exacerbated that. I think it was mainly Jesse. Don't get me wrong. This thing that his power is just, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, a parasite. That's all it is. Well, yeah. But Danny also said, she, you know, she goes, you have a really, you, know, you guys have a real talent for this actually a lot better than most. And so, uh, I, I think that was, like I said, it was well, the majority of that was him. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, that's maybe um, I overthinking it, but the way they shot it, it just felt like that was his power and the way his voice was, but maybe not, maybe not. Um, but Victor was, you know, taking it like a man, like, fuck you, I, I guess. Cause he knew all along what Jesse was going to do, but, uh, you know, Jesse hangs him up in the little torture rack. And, uh, then we flash, you know, forward to, um, 
you know, we flash back, we see the Jesse stuff, we come back, and then Cassidy is you know, tr- pretending he's worried. And uh, this is where we find out that Cassidy's actually a real shit, like a real motherfucker. So he's, you know, pretending he's worried. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fix this mess, and he runs over to the house, and he, you know, convinces Tulip, who's very skeptical. And he, uh, when he has his little talk with Jesse and Jesse starts out, you know, this was about, this was a, a talk of like getting power over the situation. And Jesse starts out just telling it like it is with Cassie. He's like, why the fuck would I trust a fucking drug addicted loser vampire? You know, and, and, you know, D- Jesse's still in his like dark rage and, uh, Cassie's, well, I, Cassidy has lied to him. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and, and you've been lying to me and you're lying to me. Why in the fuck should I trust you? And, and he's had it and Cassidy has his act going. And then we finally see Cassidy drop his act and just go, you know, I, I, before that there was a great line. Sorry. But the, you know, Oh, these are some nice sheets right here. Uh, there must be at least 200 foreskins in this one. <laughs> he's all, I was rich once. And then he moves into his like, kind of creepy Cassidy where he's like, you know what? If it was me, I'd kill that dude, you know? And, and uh, they, you could see Jesse like losing the power in this situation and Cassidy showed his true face, you know? And, and, you know, Jesse, the only thing that was stopping him was he knew he would actually lose Tulip at that yeah. point. Um, and that's what Cassidy wanted. Cassidy's all, yeah, if that was me, I'd kill that guy. You know, and then we saw Cassidy's true colors, which, you know, everybody in the comments and we all knew he was a bastard um, and that's who he really is, which sucks because you want to like him, but, and, and you want to think he's this loser drug addict. And so far in the show, he's kind of been that, but there is a lot more to this guy, a well, lot more. There's also the whole thing where he's manipulating Jesse by saying, I mean, he just goes even further by saying, um, you know what? If that if a guy touched my woman the way he did, I'd really you know uh, there'd be no question about it. But, you know I I just kill him. And he goes, but he goes whatever you decide. He goes, I'm with you either way. Either way, exactly. Yeah, that was just like oh yeah, uh, dude, that was uh, that was cool. That 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 kind of made the episode for me. You know, um, and then also Tulip calling him out as well when he comes back. And doesn't have Jesse with him, of course. What did he say? What exactly did he say? And he's like, oh, he's going to, you know, he's going to let him go. He just wants to have a talk with him, that kind of thing. And then she goes into about Cassidy. She goes, you're such, you know, you're full of shit. And I know what you're really after. And Cassidy's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, she knows. She's yeah. A dummy. She's probably the smartest person in the room, actually. Um, except when it comes to her own, you know, looking out for herself, figuring out other people, she's probably the best at, but when it comes to her own inner self judgment, she's probably the worst. Um, Um, so do you think I actually saw a lot of parallels between Reggie, their former roommate and Cassidy? Oh yeah. Oh God. Yes. That was, uh, well, they, they've had (laughs) a, a little foreshadowing and that was also the same dynamic they had with, uh, Carlos. The guy who uh, betrayed him? Yes. At Dallas? It was the same thing. It was like there's the, the third wheel, saw they were happy, they were jealous. Um, not necessarily in love with Tulip, more jealous of the of the being happy. Um, shit. Uh, you know, it's funny. Melissa and I, she was cutting my hair while we were watching that part, and she's all, does that remind you of somebody? I won't say, but like, totally. I mean, we've I guess we've all, you know, been the third wheel in that one and been the other people, you know just a very familiar situation, very human situation. Um, yeah, total foreshadowing. Uh, and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be so ugly. And I think the show might make it uglier. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, we set up the grail. We've got the Sana killers out there running around and I finally shows up by the end of the finally shows up, but I still think that this shit could have been handled in a half episode as in let except for two. So I'll agree with you there. That like where I was entertained by this episode, this stuff could have totally been done in, in 20 minutes of screen time, maybe spread over two episodes. But I mean, you know, there's so much other shit you could have shown, um, and done this a little faster. Uh, 
another thing, you know, um, we'll just go right to the end. The Santa Killers finally shows up. Uh, Victor is, you know, uh, Jesse does, he, he lets, what does he say? He, uh, he cut him down. Yeah. And uh, Tulip's all, what? You cut him down? He's all, no, I cut him down out of his harness. Oh, okay. Which saved Cassidy's ass right there. Um, and Jesse seems to be himself and I'm, you know, he got divorce papers out of it. He'd rather kill him. He said, but, uh, do you think he used the voice on him? Just kind of like, uh, cause I would, I would just go, okay, don't come after us anymore. We're done. You're done with us, which no. I'm assuming he did or no. No. Cause, uh, as, as Tulip said, she is Victor, the 3% chance that he would, you know, harm me. So Victor really loved her. We saw that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially when he, you know, he says, I love you. And she goes, that's nice. Kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> Ooh, that sucks. Yeah. And that hurts is, right yeah, there. You're, that you're, you're a hard woman, you know, is, is, what, yeah. is what he says. And he knows that she loves someone else and just married him just to marry him. He's got two pools. Yeah. Obviously. It's a good reason. Uh, and you and, need uh, more ones. <clears throat> The other thing too is um, I kind of think Dennis is dead in the other room. Yeah, I think I, I do too. Killed him. Oh, well, wouldn't Tulip figure that out? No, because she's busy, been busy with her own shit. Jesse's been busy with his own shit. He's the only one that's been left there with tennis. <laughs> is that guy <laughs> dead? Here, take your lentils and go watch. Yeah, the um, Victor's daughter. That was a yeah, great Ellie. line. So Victor, Victor's daughter comes in and goes, uh, your boyfriend's killing my daddy. <laughs> and just like, eh, you know. Um, Who thinks blueberry is cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's full of chemicals. Nobody does fun like we do. Um, so at the end, we got uh, Victor, you know, reading the stock reports to his daughter. Really exciting. And, of course, the Saint of Killers comes in. Uh, he hides his daughter. Uh, you know, preacher, boom, Victor's dead. And the Saint of Killers goes in. And I was actually thought they were going to – he was going to plug the girl. I mean, why why hold back on this one? Because the comic book <laughs> Saint of Killers would plug the girl without question. Yeah. So um, maybe they didn't want to go that far. Oh yeah, she still might. Yeah, but she she's gonna rat out the preacher like she should. Smart girl. Yeah. Uh, and that's where it ends. Um, so yeah, not the most eventful episode in the world, but I guess necessary. It's done. Um, no arse face. No grail. Um, I have to admit, missing some of the town folk a little bit from season one. Uh, I know we, you know, we're we're beyond that and everything, but I thought there was some really good. They built up some really good characters there, just to off them all. And we yeah. don't know they're all dead, but I mean, it, well, it says on the website there, but uh, you know, I don't know, man. What do you think? Um, I agree with you, and and like we were talking about earlier, there was just really no good way of bringing this backstory into play. Yeah. And yeah, it it definitely needed to be shortened. Honestly, I think it could have been done in one episode. It didn't need to be two. Uh, I, I know you're saying half an episode, but I think it needed to be just, just one episode, and, and you could have done it a lot better. Uh, I kind of want to move on to Angelville, to tell you tr the truth. And, yep. Uh, Let's and, get there. Yeah. I want to move out of New Orleans at this point and move on. Well, hopefully they're going to, but they're still there. I mean, that's the thing is like, there was a draw up to Victor and then we had Victor last episode. Then we had all the Victor this episode and yeah, that was a little much. Um, and you could tell the interest kind of waned in, in the show. Uh, you could base, um, and not just our, our videos, but you can base interest in show on, you know, just interest in video too. Um, and I go to others and, and you know, it wanes. It wanes, uh, or people don't feel the need to see this one in a hurry. Uh, yeah. This is definitely a show a lot of people, um, you know, watch. Don't watch it on Monday night; they watch it throughout the week or something like that. Which you know, it's it's a really good binge watch. When I when I rewatched the first season, uh, you know, I did like five episodes in a row. Did like three sittings. It's it's really entertaining. That that's you know, um, yeah, that's the best way to watch the show. I want to see more Man Dog. Yes. 
I, I need more weird. I need more comic stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. So, like, hopefully they, they go back to, to Gonzo a little bit because, uh, yeah, they cannot continue at this pace. I understand it from a storytelling. I understand it from a budgetary point of view, but we're here to be entertained. Damn it. Entertain us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's all we got to talk about. I do really want to chat quickly about our con stuff. I'm very excited about con. We're uh, driving down to San Diego tomorrow morning in my son, Logan. Oh. And, uh, yeah, we're going to your place. We're going to be right in that place that you're in right there. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of live stuff on the Facebook. So if you're not part of our Facebook, uh, Nerdrotic Podcast is our Facebook page. And uh, we'll, all the stuff will be on YouTube, too. So if you're a subscriber. Um, if you are a subscriber, please remember to um, hit the notification uh, bell. That does help a lot. Um, we're not live streaming on the channel right now because we got some weird, inexplicable strike that we are appealing. Uh, it's for a video that aired for a nanosecond. So we think it was a, a glitch in the matrix. Um, we did get some comment back from youtube that they think that too we didn't do anything wrong so uh we're figuring that out but in the meantime we're going to be recording these and they're just uploading them it's the same difference really you just won't be able to see it live on our live stream which i think all the 10 people were doing anyway so it didn't matter um that is all you could find all of our uh podcasts and video actually just you could go to our youtube page the nerdrotic channel everything goes there first and then we got a website nerdrotic.com and we have a Facebook, which I just mentioned. Uh, anything else, Dennis? Um, like us, uh, comment. If you comment yes. on our videos, you comment uh, pretty much anywhere that, that we're at, uh, you go in the running for prizes. Yes, and the, the grand prize for, uh, the, for Preacher, which will be announced uh, after the 11th episode, will be a Steve Dillon 9.6 uh copy now it's not cg seed but you know i used to be a grader i used to own a comic store it's a 9.6 cost copy trust me and it's signed by steve dylan uh i had him sign it myself many years ago and that will be yours if you are in the hunt so if you made a comment and you subscribed you're in the running uh and we'll let you know at the end of the final episode and ask so, us questions uh yeah you know tell us we're dumb shits if you want to oh they do they, I um know. Yeah, I loved on the Doctor Who one. Uh, that some guys like these guys don't know what they're talking about. And I would say, sir, I never said at any point I knew what I was talking about at any time. Go back and find it. I dare you. So, uh, <laughs> um, hey, just thanks for watching, everybody. And we uh, this week, I, I it's hard for me to get to comments because I have this day job. But this week, I don't have the day job, so I'm going to be rolling through all the comments for a lot of the stuff for the last month or so. And so you might be getting a lot of late responses. So look out for that. Uh, Dennis, take us out. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out, America. May the small folks sing songs of your greatness. See you guys next week. Good night, everyone. Good night.